Hey there, John Morris here. I'm the lead instructor for the Wishlist Member Certified Developers Program and the CEO here at JohnMorrisOnline.com. And in this video, we're going to cover the liquid layout approach to building responsive websites. Now, uh, this is a uh, much less common way of doing it now. Um, if you you know, if you've paid attention to web design or paid attention to this kind of responsive stuff for a little while, you know that a while back, a few years, um, you know, when screen size, sizes started to get bigger, there was a big, huge um, liquid layout, kind of full width um, design uh, trend that happened, but uh, it ultimately cl quickly fizzled out. And, you know, we talked about in the, the fluid grid video about some of the benefits of using a fluid grid as opposed to a liquid layout and a lot of those being centered around design that when you use a fluid grid you have fixed widths that you can yes they're responsive and you have uh, different ones but they are fixed widths that you can design to that uh, then is probably the main disadvantage and probably the big reason why um, liquid layouts aren't as popular because you don't have a fixed width that you can design to um, you don't have any sort of set um, you know pixel width that you can uh, build things around you kind of just uh, have to live with how things lay out or, or how they um, resize when you use a liquid layout so um, this approach really isn't as popular but it's something that uh, is kind of it's there um, and I want to show you and really <laughs> to be honest with you um, the main point of this video is to discourage you from using uh, this approach um, so uh, may not be exactly what you're after but uh, hopefully by the end of this you understand why this isn't as popular and why you really want to stick to more of the fluid grid or the combo uh, type setup which uh, obviously the combo I'll show you um, further down in the course so all right, so here's the liquid layout. You'll notice um, when you first look at this, I designed it in the same way as um, the fluid grid, so you can, you know, you have some consistency in terms of what you're looking at. So um, you'll notice, and actually, I'll go ahead and I'll open the grid layout here so that we can kind of compare the two, uh, and you can kind of have a better understanding of, of the difference and why you use each. So this is the grid. You'll notice that this is actually a fixed width and when we resize this then at different intervals it kind of changes to a different fixed width. So really what you're doing with a fluid grid is you have a set of four or five fixed widths and you're just uh, basically uh, resizing your grid uh, once the screen size gets to a certain size so that the, the fixed grid still fits within the screen size. Okay. That's different than the liquid layout where you first notice this is 100% width of the page. That was kind of the big trend at the time. You know, notice when we resize this, it always stays 100% of the screen and you'll notice that the boxes on both the left and right simply change uh, their size according to the screen size. And eventually we get to a point where we make it a top to bottom design like this. Now. To be honest, there were a lot of designs back in the day that <laughs> that didn't even do that. Um, you know, so that's, I, I guess, me more just trying to apply some common sense to this type of setup. But um, this is essentially what a liquid layout, or you may have heard it called an elastic layout, because if you look at it, it looks like, uh, it looks kind of like elastic the way each uh, side is stretching, okay? And so you can imagine if you have content on this page and you have all these different sizes of screens that are viewing this you never really know um, what your contents going to look like you kinda just have to put your content in there and live with how it may look now again you'll notice that as we resize we never have we never have a situation where the boxes inside of our browser window are wider than uh, our screen so we never have a situation where we have those ugly dreaded bottom scroll bars down here okay so this is responsive and this this does work and really uh, this was um, from my perspective this was kind of the easy solution to 
responsive web design because you don't have to build your your site to several different fixed widths you just you know you just throw these uh, this uh, layout in here and you live with how it looks okay now for some people who don't really care about design necessarily that that's fine um, but most people when building a website uh, the design is uh, probably one of the top things in terms of uh, importance so uh, this doesn't really work in that sense because you can imagine if you have say images or you're trying to do some sort of um, more advanced design it's pretty difficult to design to that and in a lot of ways it doesn't even really necessarily work even if you just have text content because let's say for example this uh, three column uh, div here well, as we resize before we flip to the top to bottom uh, we'll go just right before so about right here you notice this this is pretty small so if that's like say a sidebar of your site uh, whatever's inside of there is gonna look pretty strange when it gets down to that size and it's hard to make it work at this size and also if we go completely full screen you know making it work at this big size right here okay so you're having to design for that big size and this little size and everything in between okay so it can get a little tricky in terms of trying to build a liquid layout so um you know again my main thrust here is to to probably discourage you from using this however there are some techniques that um, you use here that are used in both the fluid grid and the uh, combo, um, the combo approach. And in fact, the whole trend that happened with this liquid, um, these liquid layouts, helped in terms of fluid grids and so forth because it helped. Uh, uh, ultimately, the fluid grid and the combo design are really taking um, what people were doing with fixed with stuff combining it with this kind of liquid layout like this and getting what we have today which is ultimately a better product and so to understand that actually let's go ahead and look at the code so one thing that I want you to notice about this and actually let me go ahead and open one more thing here I'm going to go ahead and open the uh, grid CSS. So if you look here, the big thing I want you to look at is this span 1 through span 12. You'll notice the percentage widths here. On the liquid grid, you'll notice that's actually exactly the same. Okay, So this is, in a, uh, the, the fluid grid in a sense is is almost in a way a combo itself. These aren't fixed widths, these are percentage widths. The difference between a liquid layout and a grid layout is gonna happen down here, which is this container. You remember everything in our fluid grid was wrapped inside of a container, and the container is what changes its size at these different screen widths, and that's what gives us our, our grids that are at different widths that we can design to. With the liquid layout, the main difference is that you'll notice that's gone okay so we're not resizing the container div at different screen widths we're just letting the the our spans um, be a hundred percent width here and just flow out to the entire width of the page that's really the main difference between a fluid grid and a liquid layout and when you get into the combo uh, design you'll notice that it this is it's a very it's going to be very similar you're going to still see those liquid elements now when I say that uh, the fluid grid is really a combination of fixed width stuff and uh, the liquid is because you know at first a lot of the span widths in fact if I believe it's bootstrap 2.3 if you look at it the span widths used there aren't percentage widths they're fixed widths they're actual pixel widths now they they could determine that because they knew what the container width was going to be so they could set the span widths like this however if you uh, take a look at bootstrap 3 
you'll notice that they're they're now using percentage widths, and that's because it's a it's really a better way to go about it. You get the same effect, but you don't have any run into any issues when you're trying to customize the framework, um, and you're you're using fixed widths for the spans. Okay, so uh, again, it creates ultimately a better framework or a better responsive site by combining um, that liquid kind of idea into this fixed idea for a fluid grid um, but again you know uh, for the pure liquid layout you don't have the main difference is that you don't have these container widths down here like you do on the fluid grid so uh, again that's the main difference between the two actually all the all the rest of the CSS in this file is exactly the same between the liquid and the, the grid layout fluid grid this is the only thing that's any different. Okay, so that's a fluid or a liquid grid. Um, that's really some of the disadvantages of it, but also, you know, how it's helped in terms of web design. I don't think, I mean, I'll, just being frank, there's not going to be a ton of people that are going to ask you to build a a fluid or a liquid site like this. So um, it's not necessarily something. In terms of the overall approach that you need to necessarily completely worry about but because this approach is integrated into all the other approaches and is becoming kind of more of the basis for those it's definitely something that you still need to uh, understand and, and know how to use because it's something that you're going to use in the other more common approaches all right so that's the uh, liquid layout approach hopefully I've successfully <laughs> discouraged you from using it um, and uh, we'll get into some of the combo stuff in the, in the next video. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed this one. I'll talk to you later.